hopefully this doesn't go badly. So we know that the graph is going to look essentially the same as it's the same thing, but just repeated twice. And the V actually looks kind of weird. My name is Triple Nine Bear from Bear Science Lab, and here I have a remote controlled car. Now, have you heard of Vernier? Well, they've produced a lab demonstration and a motion detector where basically they have an object on a road, and the motion detector is supposed to detect the motion of that object and make PT. Uh, or position time, velocity time, and acceleration time graph. But I personally think I'm smarter than Vernier. So I am going to try making these graphs for myself. So first thing I'm going to do is test it with uh, XT graphs. So we've got this one. I'm just going to lay it at rest. For this one, I'm going to draw it at a very slow, constant velocity. This one, I'm going to draw it at a fast constant velocity. And this one, I'm going to draw it as it's speeding up. So, as you can see, it's just a constant distance away from me. So, that means it's a constant graph. And this is the distance from me to the car. So, it just stays like that for the entire thing. Because this car isn't moving. So, it doesn't mean any additional displacement from me. Oh! Now let's put it at a slow constant velocity, assuming I can get this car to move slow. Alright, so that was pretty slow constant velocity. So, what I can draw it as, uh, as is an increasing graph with a very small slope. Why? Because slow constant velocity means that there is a low velo uh, constant velocity. If it's constant velocity, then the graph of displacement over time must be linear because linear graphs have a constant slope. This is what we did for this one. We can use the same logic and say that the fast constant velocity is going to look a little bit something like this. So uh, I'm going to put this a little backwards so we can get more distance for it to speed up. And if, if it hits with enough velocity, this safeguard might even follow. So let's try it. Three, two, one. So, that was nice. As you saw, it sped up, and I'm gonna put the seat guard. And that was like a conservation of momentum. Mm -hmm. it, that object came to its job, and that was. And the speeding up graph is going to look like this. Unbelievable. What? Well, think of the slopes at different points. At this point, it's a low slope because there's a low velocity, and at this point later. It's a high slope because there's a high velocity. All right, so there's no change here. So, so we have zero over here. Now, over here, it's a slow constant velocity. So velocity is going to be constant and low. Here we have a fast constant velocity. So velocity is going to be constant and high. And speeding up velocity is going to increase like this. Making three DT and three VT graphs for three scenarios. One, the car is moving towards me. Two, the car is moving away from me. And three, the car is speeding up away from me. All right. So now, first, let's do away from me. And this is going to be pretty easy. Oh, don't fall over. Don't fall over. So that was a pretty easy graph, like what we saw before. This is away from me, away from the center. And how would the VT graph look like? Well, it would look like this because it's a constant positive velocity. We're going to have to rearrange this for this one because it's away from me. Uh, towards me, not away from me. So this is how it's going to have to look. This time it's going to be. Alright, there we go. Good enough. So now we've got. It started at this reasonable distance away from me, and it came towards me. So the distance time graph would look like this. It is towards the center. One is speeding up away from center. Yes. Uh, 
using this car for some demonstrations what I'm going to do now is simply take this DT graph and try to describe the motion in each of the sections so for a how do you describe this motion take five seconds to think about it. five four pause the video for more time two one I know that was less than five seconds but let's do it so the velocity here is obviously positive because displacement is increasing but can you see that the acceleration here is negative? Hopefully you can, because here the slope is pretty high, but over here it becomes less, and over here it's zero. So as the slope becomes lower, that means that the acceleration is negative, because the slope is decreasing. At B, what is velocity and what is acceleration? Take five seconds to, th to think about it. Five, four, part of the video for more time, two, one. All right. So, here, the velocity is negative because displacement is decreasing, obviously. You can see it's getting more negative because the slope is falling farther and farther, so acceleration is negative here, too. What about C? Well, velocity is zero because there is no change uh, in displacement, and acceleration is also zero because uh, if velocity is zero, then actually, no. If velocity is zero, then acceleration is not necessarily zero. But here, since it's a straight section, velocity is zero, and there is no acceleration. <sighs> Sorry. Over here, D, velocity is uh, constant, but it's positive, and acceleration is also zero, actually. Acceleration is zero. All right. For the move away into words, uh, let's get this oriented correctly. Whoa. Let's try analyzing the motion of the car. So uh, let's just drive this by hand, sped up towards the book, but then it stopped here and turned back around as I switched the controls of the remote. So that means that it basically looked a little bit like this, where it was speeding up, uh, not like that. It was speeding up and then it stopped as uh, and because here, around here, I changed the remote direction and then it went back. All right, now let's try and do the back and forth. Oh yeah, I forgot about the VT graph. So we know that I was going in the positive direction here and I it took a little bit of time to adjust my velocity here. Actually, it would look a little bit something like this. Yeah, okay. So this is my VT graph and these two, disclaimer, even though this is not to scale, these two add up to the uh, cancel out. So now, uh, oh wait, this graph isn't complete. I'm dumb. Because actually, it slows down from the negative direction around here too. This is how the full graph is gonna look like. All right, good. Let me just adjust my hair a little bit. And now, Let's do the moving back and forth. Hang on. Hopefully this doesn't go badly. So we know that the graph is going to look essentially the same as it's the same thing, but just repeated twice. And the V actually looks kind of weird. Isn't that special one? All right. So now let's do the inclined plane. No safeguards for this one, but yo's. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our safeguard and put it under this bench. Just like uh, so. Okay. Position it well. So hopefully this doesn't fall over. And here is how we're going to do our incline plane. So first I'm going to do it coming towards me and then going back. And I'm just going to... Huh. All right, let's see. Hopefully this works. 
costing would keep decreasing. All right, so that's it for today. And don't forget to keep celebrating Black History Month. Uh, come visit this website so that we can celebrate black scientists together.